Hi guys. Okay, so the long-awaited Iron Man Coeur d'Alene 2013 race week recap. <laughs> okay, here's my medal. Oh, I finished. So I kind of um, blew the ending. I finished. So I'm an Iron Man. Yay! Officially. Um, but I want to rewind a little bit and tell you about uh, the race week and how that was. So um, the race was on June 23rd and um, a Sunday and you have to check in for the race a couple days before because it's very involved. There is There were 2,700 athletes and um, they have to get your transition area all organized. You have to get all the bikes, 2,700 bikes. Um, organized and I am going to include in this video a couple little videos that I took of the transition areas and um, the checking in process um, but okay so let me go back so we arrived on um, the 19th the Wednesday and it was pouring rain like torrential horrible rain and we stayed in my parents um, brand new RV, which is gorgeous, it's this 42 foot, it's way nicer than staying in any luxury hotel, um, trust me, it was gorgeous, it had flat, flat screen TVs and a full refrigerator, it was just wonderful. So um, my father, the cranium, my sister, the Borg, um, my mother, the Ironman nutrition specialist, and myself stayed um, in the RV, motorhome, and we stayed right on the lake. Um, that the swim took place in, the swim portion of the race took place in. So we got there and all of our stuff was there and everything was arranged um, and it was pouring rain and just no end in sight of the rain and we kept checking on my phone, I kept checking the weather and seeing like, oh my gosh, is it going to be raining on race day? I can't imagine riding 112 miles in the re good weather, let alone in the rain. So I was a little bit nervous, or a lot nervous, and um, my sister the Borg was not nervous. She went out on a, on a like warm up or you know just a little race ride beforehand, like on the Thursday in the rain with my dad the cranium. I did not. I did, however, get in uh, the lake. I I swam in the river that led into the lake, but it's the same temperature um, because we stayed right on the lake. So I got out and did a couple practice swims. I did one by myself, which was a little freaky. Um, and then I did one with uh, my sister and my dad. And I'll show you a little clip of that that my mother took. And um, that week, we just sort of acclimated to the area. Um, and we had to do all of these, like there was a mandatory meeting that we had to go to and they went over the race rules and just talked about the course and all of that. And the excitement that surrounds this race is, is you just can't compare it to anything. There's no way to really um, explain all of these people who are going to do this really monumental feat um, are all there and they have their support team, their family members. and you know, it's just all a buzz and there's the big expo and you get to look at all the different gear and um, you go, I mean, in the little town of Coeur d'Alene, which is beautiful, I loved it. I really fell in love with Idaho and Coeur d'Alene. Um, but even, you know, my sister and I went into Starbucks and talked to a couple athletes that were in town to do it and um, everybody's just really excited, everybody's really supportive and um, it's really neat. So I'm going to let you watch a couple clips that I took throughout the week. I think there's one of um, us going for a swim. There's one of my sister and I at Starbucks and she's giving me a, um, a, a rather scary warning, which uh, you'll think that's funny, I think. Um, and just a couple other videos. Um, so you get to watch those. Okay. okay. Here they are. Getting in. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're wet now. <laughs> there we go. There they go. I don't know, Dad. It's it's nice. It's nice. I have to get used to it. I guess. Uh.
There they go. Off beyond the uh, barrier and across the river. You guys keep your eyes open. We have to watch out for so here we are at Starbucks and the Borg has just given me some insight on something I might see. She doesn't believe me. On the race course on the bike. So what did you... Um, there is a possibility that you might see fecal matter of a human sort on the bike. Fecal matter. As in they drop a loaf, they'll pull their stuff to the side and drop it out and it's just right there on the, on the ground. An actual... And, and, and then some people who don't even bother to remove it from their drawers and that it'll be all smeared around and you'll smell it. <laughs> and you want to... You want to you wanna pass them quickly. <laughs> um, and then if, if they don't change... Some people don't change. They don't change in the T2? Or, or, or they just do it in the run. During the run, they just poop themselves. <laughs> and it's all messy. A situation? Drawers. It's a situation. And unless they're wearing black, you can tell. And if they're not wearing black, sometimes you can still tell. It was your first Iron Man that you saw an actual... I saw the actual loaf. Yep. It was about mile, on the mile 25-ish. Yeah. And it's a full climb all the time, so I mean, maybe that's why. No loves? Okay. Oh, no loves for that. So that was um, something I need to... Look out. Look out. Hi guys. No, okay, no, so no. Um, <laughs> we're all in the car. The cranium is driving. Um, the the nutrition, the triathlon nutrition guru is sitting in the passenger seat in front of me. There is uh, the Borg slash Nibbler. See her hat? It's the Nibbler. See little teeth. Little teeth. That's my sister. She is the Borg. I show them your hat. Um, oh, this is my hat. Um, the. Uh, Bonk Breakers gave me this hat today because I have a blog and they wanted me and she to put it on breaker. because I was doing little um, ridiculous dances around their stand. Like no. everybody in the rain, in the rain, in the the rain, rain tribal dance. Everybody try these; they're fantastic. I love Bonk Breakers. And then they were like, "Oh, here's the hat." And I think it's because they want to, me to be obnoxious around the entire race so that people buy Bonk Breakers. But I really think people should buy Bonk Breakers. If you don't know what they are, they're amazing. And the one you need to try first is the peanut butter chocolate chip one because it tastes like a little tiny piece of heaven given down directly from our Lord, directly to us as a gift. Yes. All right. We're driving forever. Maybe I'll give you guys a little view without making you sick um, of out here. This is Idaho and we're driving forever. And there is the cranium, and there's the nutrition specialist. Yay! Okay, so this is my run gear transition bag, and I already placed my bike transition bag. And can you see the sea of bags? Each athlete has to pack their transition bag, and then they come in, they place it in order. Oh, that's not mine. I picked up somebody else. Oh, oh dude. I'm 6.30. <laughs> And um, so the spot just seems Okay, this is the bike. The lot of a million bikes. It's between eight and ten million dollars worth of bikes. Between eight and ten million dollars of bikes in there. They are all geared up and we have to find our bike. Hey guys. Okay, so these are some final thoughts. Uh, it's the day before the race the evening the, afternoon after. the afternoon before the race our bikes are in transition and um the borg and i are chilling on the docks this is beautiful beauty, beautiful um scenery and um the cranium is in the motorhome watching with Clouseau his feet up. with his feet up like a smart man like we're supposed to be doing and we went down to the expo and i bought um some bunk breakers because love them and um, the Borg bought some temporary tattoos. <laughs> My big little dollar fifty purchase. Little dollar fifty purchase. Little temporary tattoos. So we're gonna have red. Um, you got some for me too, right? Yeah, two for each. Okay. Little red Iron Man tattoos on arms, and maybe and one on the leg. Yeah. And um, they makes us really real. cool. So, final thoughts, Borg. Um, you're going to get to witness probably one of the harder things in the morning is to eat and we're trying to eat um, anywhere from 1300 to 1500 calories at 3 a.m. to try to prepare. So you ha yeah so this is my first one I've never done this but apparently we're going to video it because apparently it's going to be quite entertaining to have um, the nutrition specialist slash my mother our mother 
Um, force feed us. Force feed us 1,500 calories. <laughs> and she's like, okay. That... we asked her to do it. We, we did. And yeah. So we have all these things and it's actually quite funny. So you prep yourselves. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be a hilarious. But just know that um, we won't be in a very good mood. It's food frenzy at 3 a.m. And then you have the option of going back to sleep. We try for an hour and a half. I don't think I'm going to go back to sleep. Well, two hours. Okay, so the night before the race, um, I was actually incredibly excited because the weather had turned um, and it was meant to be sunny and wonderful and like 79 degrees, perfect race weather. Um, so I was excited going to sleep that night and not nervous, just excited because my goal was to finish, not to, you know, try to get top three <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I went to sleep that night excited and not nervous, but knowing that I had to get up early, early or in the middle of the night and eat 1500 calories and my mother had prepared everything for my father and my sister and I so we had to get up and like sleepy eyed crazy try to eat all this food and then go back to sleep so I'm gonna let you see a clip of a couple clips that I took then it's one in the morning and there she is look at her she's like can you hand me the peanut butter all right I'm chopping I'm here drink this husband and look Reeves like Alright, the Borg is already putting down, I don't even know, that's so gross, she's eating, she's, her eyes still have crusties. A crusties, man? There she's going, look, look at, she's on it. Alright, folks. You better hurry up, you gotta do this. Where's the oh God. chocolate? So I just, if you want to know what we are being force fed right now, by the lovely nutrition specialist, I just drank this. We're back here. Okay. This one. And is that your second one or your first one? Um, first. You're going to have to take one. Oh, now I'm I'll eating have, I'll have on the rocks. a bagel with some uh, peanut butter inside. Wake up, quick, start chewing. Um, my dad was eating his and he says, <laughs> I need some jelly. Here, put some applesauce on it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> my mom just said, oh, "My dad's gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my mom goes here, put some applesauce on it. I have jelly if you want jelly. Oh, the on dog's it. barking. And <laughs> all right, I have got to make this. My dad, thing. Larry, he's right there. I'm making too much noise, guys. Oh, oh, sorry. My dad is putting applesauce on his bag. All right. So the morning of the race um, was just so exciting. Everything was already in place. Uh, all we had to do was show up. Our bikes were already in the transition area. Everything was already set up and we had to show up and we had to, you know, do our Carbo Pro, um, the nutrition that we had all laid out and get, I had to go, <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you, my father showed up in the morning and we go into the transition area to check your bike and load it up with the water bottles and all of those things. And my father had a flat tire and it turned out it wasn't just air down. It was actually like punctured or something because it wouldn't blow up. So there was frantic, ah, new tire, ah, and that was kind of exciting. And, um, I had to use the porta potty and there was a line about a mile long. So the pre-race that I envisioned with my father and my sister, I was just in line for the porta potties talking to the people around me and they were off doing whatever they were doing. I didn't actually see them until during the race. Um, so I uh, did that and then I got my wetsuit on and I made my way down to the starting line, which is just amazing, 2,700 athletes all kind of queued up. Um, Ironman races in the past have had a mass start, which means everybody is lined up on the beach or in the water, and then the cannon goes off, and everybody just goes at once, and it's kind of scary because there are faster swimmers, slower swimmers, and you're getting hit and, you know, kicked, and it's, ah, it's crazy for the first 500 meters. The way they did this race, which was kind of nice, I don't have anything to compare it to because this was my first Ironman, but I thought it was lovely. So they had you... Uh, line up according to your estimated swim finish time. Okay, so you, so I lined up in the hour and 35 to 45 minute um, kind of queue. Okay, and my 
dad and my sister lined up in the hour to hour 15. So they were guesstimating that they were going to do it within an hour to hour 15 minutes. Um, so the cannon went off and off we went and we just sort of filed through in and as you started through the starting line, it cued your timing chip that's on your heel. So you wear a timing chip the whole time and then there's all these points throughout the race where they, you know, your timing chip is red and it checks you in. So it's pretty neat. And um, so I got in the water and one lens of my goggles were leaking and it bothered me for about you know, I don't know, 500 yards, and then I just decided, just swim as if you don't have goggles on, and I just didn't worry about clearing it or anything, and I just swam and swam and swam, and my swim was really fast for me. Um, I did the two miles, uh, 2.4 mile swim in an hour and 19 minutes, which was almost exactly the same time as my father, which was really exciting. Um, my sister, I think, did it in an hour and uh, 14 minutes, so she was a little faster than we were. Um, so then I got out of the water, and I was excited to have survived that and um, done it fairly quickly. And what was really neat about this race was you get out of the water, and you go through the timer thing, and you're ready to take your wetsuit off, and they have wetsuit strippers. So you literally take the top off, and you sit on the ground, and volunteers rip the wetsuit off. It's really neat and give it back to you and then a volunteer takes you into the tent and you have a bag that is your um, your bike transition bag it has all the gear that you've loaded that you need for your bike so I changed my clothes I, I swam in a wetsuit and a bathing suit so I changed into my bike clothes and off I went onto the bike um, the bike took me about eight hours and it was very hilly um, I felt like I was going like five miles an hour and then I'd go like 37 miles an hour going down there like <laughs> and I was screaming like oh my gosh and there were lots I saw you know bikes broken down and then throughout the course there are um, aid stations where you can get nutrition if you've lost yours or you just didn't have enough um, they give you water and things like that and then there are of course port potty stalls you know throughout but I remember they marked the 30 mile mark, the 50, the 70, the 90. It was really amazing because you start kind of talking to yourself and you know realizing that you're doing something that you never, I didn't, I, I never thought I would do or could do. And um, when I saw, <laughs> I'm gonna get emotional, when I saw that 100 mile like marker, I thought, I got really excited, I thought, oh my gosh, I only have 12 miles left, and what's 12 miles to bike when you've just ridden 100, right? So I was, my energy was high, and I was riding, and I was so excited, and then I realized, ooh, when I finish this, I've got to run a marathon, 26 miles. <laughs> I was like, what? So, um, toward the last couple miles of the bike, I started to get afraid of the run portion, but I remember what my dad had said prior to the race. He said, if you make it to the end of the bike, you've got this, Sarah. And um, that was really exciting to me because I thought, even if I have to walk um, this entire marathon, I, I think I have enough time to get in under the 17 hours. Uh, 17 hours was the cutoff. So I went into the transition area, they took, they take your bike, you get off, they take your bike and I go into the transition area and um, changed and it was really neat when you come out of the um, transition area, there are people with all this white sunblock all over their hands and you just go, oh, and they slather you with sunblock if you want, I, I wanted. And they give you like, I don't know, there were little baggies of gummy bears and stuff, it was really cute. So. I took the last swig of my CarboPro that I had prepped and off I went and I walked for a little while in the run just you know a hundred yards and I thought I wonder if my body's gonna let me run because I was pretty wiped out by that point and so I started to run and I could run and I was really excited and I thought and I felt good I thought oh this is really good um, and then it started going uphill and I thought oh my gosh then um, the pivot point of my entire race and really when the race began um, 
for me in my heart and what I will remember, um, I saw my dad. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little emotional. Um, the race, the, the run was two loops. So you had to go up and turn around and come down through the village and then up again. So I was going up and he was coming down. So he was in front of me. And I saw him, but he was walking. And I thought, well, I, I don't know why he's walking because he trained incredibly hard as we all did and I wondered was he hurt so I thought I'll just keep running because I planned to walk a little bit and I said I'll just keep running until I catch up with my dad so I ran up to the top and I went around and I came down and my body was starting to really um, feel the fatigue of the day and the race and I caught up with my dad and I started to walk next to my dad hey dad and I started to walk and he said Sarah, um, you know, nutritionally, I'm, <laughs> I think his eloquent words were, um, nutritionally, I'm screwed. <laughs> but um, what he meant was that he just felt um, maybe off nutritionally. And um, on the bike, he said um, that his, the muscle, the quadra, quadratus lumborum, which is a muscle on the side of your spine and your kind of lumbar area, um, he said, I think I pulled it or it's just really tight and he was having pain to run. So he was walking and at that point I thought it's a good idea for me to walk too and really the reason I wanted to do this race to begin with is to do it with my father. It was something um, that I really, I, I wanted to be included <laughs> um, in like the family that does the Iron Man and I just wanted to do it with my dad so it was so amazing and meaningful to me to be able to walk with my father and we ended up walking um, together um, for 20 miles until the end of the race and the entire time was a struggle I felt that my father and I were kind of pulling ourselves through this battle with our bodies, um, my legs were shot, um, I was exhausted, I felt a little delirious, and um, we kept checking our watches, and I was looking, and we were calculating, okay, how fast are we going, um, will we make it in time, we have this much time left, we've got to pick up our pace, and my dad would have cramps, and we'd have to stop and stretch, and I had to stop and go to the port body a lot. Um, what I figured out is that I, I did something um, wrong. I did something wrong um, with the nutrition throughout the race because my fingers were super swollen, my face was swollen, my ankles were swollen, um, and I. So I think my sodium water intake was off a little bit. So I was experiencing. I, I can't think of the name of it, but there is a. Um, something that happens to somebody that doesn't have their electrolytes in order um, during a long endurance race and that was happening to me so I was swelling up my dad's fingers were swelling up so it was dark and we were really really fighting and struggling at the end um, pushing each other which was I mean really the the best and the most powerful bonding experience I've ever had with my father which I it was just amazing so, anyway, the last bit of the race, oh, I guess I should tell you, along the race course, um, part of it is through the town and through the housing, and people were out of their houses and camped out in the front yard and cheering and clinking cowbells, and, and the town was just very supportive, and it was wonderful. And um, so uh, we were looking at the clock, and the cutoff was 17 hours and my dad and I crossed the finish line together and I crossed 16 hours and 45 minutes. So just 15 minutes longer and I would not have been an Iron Man. They do not kind of deem you an a Iron Man if you don't get it under the 17 hours. So my dad and I pushed each other through and we both walked away with a finisher medal and this is my bike jersey that my dad bought me the next day um, kind of commemorative of the event uh, my sister the Borg 
had an amazing swim, an amazing bike. I think she did it in like six hours and I did it in eight. <laughs> um, and then she had some intestinal, uh, like abdomen pain and distress, kind of stomach shutdown during the run. Uh, so she didn't have the fastest race that she wanted to have, but she was under 13 hours, which I think is amazing. And um, <laughs> so, right? <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm so proud of my sister, and I'm proud of my dad, and my mother was there. I saw her four times during the bike. She planted herself strategically throughout the race so she could see us, and she was a wonderful support um, the entire time. And uh, yeah, and she was there with my sister when my dad and I crossed the finish line. So it was an amazing experience. Um, I am proud to say that <laughs> I did it, but <laughs> it was so hard. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, and I've given birth to two children. So it was harder than giving birth to both of those children combined. But um, I, to this day, right now, I can still say I, I don't think I will ever do it again. I, I love triathlon and I will continue to compete in Olympic distance and maybe even half Ironman distance, but never again will I, I don't think I will put my body through um, the full Ironman distance because I don't think it could ever match the amazing experience that this one was. So anyway, ah, there's my recap and um, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you guys for supporting me the last six months across, along the way. And, uh, yeah, so if this was a long video, and if you made it to the end and you listened to the whole thing, then thank you, and I love you guys, and that's it. Yay, Iron Man!